Hello, everybody. My name is Dr. Joel Polevsky. I'm professor of medicine at the University of California, San Francisco, shown here behind me on this screenshot. Greetings from the San Francisco Bay Area. It is my great pleasure today to be kicking off the Anal Cancer Foundation Virtual Patient Conference. Working with the Anal Cancer Foundation has been a, a real privilege for me. My interests in my uh, clinical and research careers have been largely focused on anal cancer and its prevention. And the Anal Cancer Foundation has been a truly wonderful partner in those efforts. As you know, the Amada children, I call them the Amada Sibs, Justine, Camille, and Tristan, responded to a great tragedy in their lives, namely the loss of their mom to anal cancer by creating a foundation that is truly unique in the world, designed to further the cause of anal cancer with respect to prevention, treatment, and destigmatization, amongst many other activities. I think this particular conference is a great step forward, and I look forward to interacting with all of you. So with that, I'm going to dive right in, and uh, I'm uh, titling my presentation, Anal Cancer 101, The Basics and Hope for the Future. So what do I mean by the basics and the hope? Well, as far as the basics are concerned, I'd like to help you understand a little bit more about HPV. I'd like to help you understand how HPV infection may lead to anal cancer and to provide you with some of the more recent numbers with respect to anal cancer statistics. And then I'd like to focus on what I think is one of the most fun parts of my uh, presentation, which is the hope. And here um, I'd like to focus primarily on helping you to understand methods that we are developing to prevent anal cancer in the future. So firstly, HPV. This is what the virus, human papillomavirus, actually looks like. This is the coding of the virus. Uh, and inside of that coating is the DNA of the virus. I think in the COVID area, people understand a lot more now about viruses, DNA and RNA. This is a DNA virus, and this is the DNA that encodes all of the proteins that HPV makes that play an important role in the development of anal cancer, cervical cancer, a lot of head and neck cancers and others. It's very important to understand that there are actually many HPV types. There's a, in fact over 200 of them, but only a subset of them are known to cause cancer. The important ones that cause cancer are shown on this slide. And uh, when I show this slide to the medical students, I'm very careful to point out that I was not inebriated when I made it by making HPV 16 bigger than all the others, because this is the HPV type that is particularly aggressive with respect to causing cancer. And in fact, almost all HPV related cancers are caused by HPV 16. And most HPV, most anal cancers are in fact caused by HPV, at least 90%. So most of those 90% are HPV 16, but other HPV types may be playing an important role as well. Cervical cancer is also caused by HPV. Uh, by the same HPV types, though in the cervix, the range is a little bit broader, with HPV 16 still being the most important, but not quite as prominent a cause as it is for anal cancer. Now, there are, of course, many other uh, HPV types that don't cause cancer. It is said that at least 80% of all sexually active people will get at least one genital HPV type uh, through sexual transmission most of the time. Uh, at some point in time in their lifetime. And since the cancers that occur from HPV are much rarer than that, what that means is that having HPV doesn't mean you're gonna get anal cancer. In fact, only a small proportion of people who get HPV will get cancer or anal cancer in particular. But if you do get one of those cancers, it is almost always with the infection with one of those HPV types. Another very important piece of information to understand about HPV is that it has only one kind of target on the body, and that's your skin cell. I'm showing you on this diagram what a skin looks like. 
Basically, it's a bunch of layers of cells called epithelial cells sitting on top of a basement membrane, we call it. It's like the floor. By definition, these cells stay above the floor and they go through a life cycle in which they develop and mature and then they fall off. And this cycle repeats itself. These cells here at the bottom are always making more copies of themselves and then generating their daughters or sons as they mature and then eventually fall off. So in that sense, with your skin constantly turning over, we're kind of like snakes. We're constantly shedding. But that process is much more inapparent, fortunately for us in our daily lives. But HPV is a very, very clever virus because what it does in infecting the skin is it infects the exact cells that you don't want it to infect, namely the ones that are always reproducing. So when HPV infects, it does so down here at the bottom and basically establishes what would be considered like a permanent reservoir of infection because when these cells divide, they carry copies of the virus with them. When they mature, they, the cells do eventually fall off and the HPV with it, but the cells at the bottom remain. So many of us, though this is a bit controversial, many of us believe that once you get an HPV infection, you have a chronic infection that in most cases doesn't cause problems for people. It remains kind of latent or dormant, but in a few cases it can cause problems such as precancer or cancer. But what you have now, for instance, if you do have an HPV infection, because the infection is dormant or latent, may have been something that you acquired perhaps through a sexual contact, even decades earlier. And it may take even as few as one or two sexual contacts to get it. So HPV is very easy to acquire. Once we have it, we tend to keep it. Our immune systems tend to control it. So when these cells mature and fall off, with the copies of the virus in them, they're also shedding infectious virus. And this virus is then free to spread to potentially a sexual partner. You could, you could even spread it to other parts of your own skin. So this is a part of the life cycle of the virus. The virus does its dirty work as far as causing cancer through some of the products that um, the DNA makes. These are called early region proteins. And the most important ones are called E6 and E7. These are what we call the viral oncoproteins. I'm not gonna go into all the details about how they cause cancer, but suffice it to say that they work by destabilizing your own human chromosomal DNA and making it more susceptible to cancer. So that over time, when your cells get exposed to things that could damage your DNA, such as carcinogens, such as potentially sunlight, depending on where we're talking about, having HPV there makes your cells more susceptible to accumulating mutations, which eventually might lead to cancer. So that's how HPV plays its role. The late HPV proteins are important because these are the two proteins that make up the coding of the virus that I just showed you. And uh, these are also particularly L1, the protein that is used for the HPV vaccine that I'll also talk about in a few minutes. So this is another schematic representation of the skin. And here is normal skin here on the left. Again, most of us who get HPV will get it down here at the bottom, but no problems caused by it. However, a small percentage of people will develop a change. The virus goes through a different pathway, which leads to what we call high-grade squamous intraepithelial lesions. This is the precancerous lesion. Here, we're not getting a lot of virus made. Instead, we're getting a lot of that E6 and E7 protein made, not so much infectious virus. So the H cell lesions are not very infectious, but they do cause these changes in the cells that you can see here, they're smaller, which have the potential over time, and it could be decades, to progress to cancer. And cancer by definition occurs when these cells decide to break through that floor and go into the tissues below where they can spread either locally blocking vital organs or potentially spread through the bloodstream or the lymphatic system to distant organs, such as the lungs and the liver, where they can also cause serious problems by creating very large tumors in those organs. So this H cell lesion is the lesion 
They were primarily focused on finding to try and prevent cancers in people who already have HPV infection. This is what we're looking for when women have cervical pap smears. And this is what we're looking for when we're doing the equivalent in the anus, which is called anal cytology. So basically when we have L-cell, this is mostly HPV infection. And when we have H-cell, this is primarily precancer. Now, what about the anus? So the anus is um, an organ that has a skin surface that HPV likes to infect. The anus is a very large organ, actually. It goes from the end of the rectum over here all the way to the outside. So all of this is inside. Um, and then it also includes five centimeters or so radius of skin uh, on the outside. We call that the perianus which you can see if you gently spread the buttocks. So from the opening of the anus to about five centimeters radius is the perianus, but together the perianus and the anal canal from the opening of the anus to the end of the rectum are all areas that HPV can infect and cause anal cancer in. So it's kind of like two separate organs in a way, but most of the time when it does that, it's causing infection at the uh, junction between the rectum and the anus. And this is where most of those H cell lesions arise and where most of the anal cancers arise. That said, you can get precancer and cancer anywhere from this area here at the end of the rectum to the end of that perianal region. So why is anal cancer so important? Well, it's a rare cancer in the general population, but it is increasing. And one of the reasons it's increasing, unlike other HPV related cancers like cervical cancer is that we don't yet routinely screen for it to prevent them. So uh, since the 1970s, we know that the incidence of anal cancer is going up by about two to 3% per year in both men and women in the general population. You're seeing these increases in multiple age brackets, um, multiple race and ethnic groups, we're seeing it um, in younger individuals with about half of all people who die from anal cancer being under the age of 65. And we're also seeing that the number of people diagnosed with advanced stage disease is increasing. So this is clearly a problem that we must be paying more attention to. I wanna to switch to hope now. And here we're talking about prevention where I think we've made a lot of progress here we talk about primary and secondary prevention, where primary prevention is vaccination to prevent the initial causative agent from infecting a person. HPV causes anal cancer, so if we can prevent a person from getting HPV, we will prevent them from getting anal cancer and other HPV-associated cancers. The problem here, if you will, is that the vaccines that we have, which are fantastic, only work to prevent initial HPV infection. Once you've been exposed, the vaccine doesn't really help you. So for those individuals, the next thing we can do is what we call secondary prevention, which is to screen for and treat any lesions or abnormalities that may arise uh, as a result of that HPV infection, specifically the HCL, to remove it before it can progress to cancer. So the vaccine is made from that L1 protein, as I mentioned. It's uh, assembled in a uh, a, a laboratory in the test tube to look like a regular HPV particle. And then it's injected into people to make antibodies that will hopefully prevent initial acquisition of HPV. It's very similar, in fact, to the concept behind the current COVID uh, vaccines. There are uh, several different vaccines available around the world, but the one that's available in the US now, the only one is called the nine valent vaccine. And it covers most of those cancer-causing HPV types that I mentioned, as well as a couple of HPV types that are known to cause genital warts. Again, these are really safe, highly effective vaccines that are effective for very long periods of time. We've been following people for now more than 10 years, still have not seen infection protection waning. We don't know how long that protection is gonna last, but so far it's lasting for as long as we've been able to follow people. We have shown that the vaccine works really well to protect against anal HPV infection and anal intraepithelial neoplasia or HCL. 
just like it was shown to do so in the cervix and the vulva of women. So we think that this vaccine, if given early enough prior to onset of sexual activity, should prevent a great deal of anal cancer in the future, since they will prevent a great deal of anal HPV infection. So based on the data from that paper I just showed you and several other papers, the CDC's Advisory Committee on Immunization Practice has recommendations for the HPV vaccine for both men and women. What about secondary prevention of screening? So here uh, we're borrowing from the methods used by gynecologists. So when a woman is getting cervical cancer prevention, they start with a cervical pap smear. And if that pap smear is abnormal, then the gynecologist will use a colposcope or a rolling microscope to try and find the source of the abnormal cells on the pap smear, take a biopsy to make sure that it's precancer, not cancer, and then remove that precancerous area to prevent cancer. So we do something very similar in the anus. Here we're using a small plastic anoscope in an individual who we're looking for um, anal H cell. And then we use a colposcope to look through that anoscope to find changes where, for instance, the um, blood vessel patterns here are highly suggestive of H cell. So here we would take a biopsy to prove it. And once it's proven, we would treat that lesion to remove it in the hopes of preventing progression to cancer. These are procedures that are pretty easily done in the office. And the most common one that we use right now is called hyfrication or electrocautery. So you may wonder why do people not routinely get screened and treated for age cell to prevent anal cancer given the rising numbers that I showed you and the fact that certain groups are at especially high risk. And the answer is that we don't have the proof yet that it works. We are in the era of evidence-based medicine right now, and we need the data to show that treating age cell prevents anal cancer. So we are doing a study right now to do just that. It's called the ANCHOR study. Uh, this is a very large study, and we hope to have some data soon to tell us whether or not uh, treating H cell prevents anal cancer. And if it does, then we believe that the implementation of screening and treatment of H cell should become much more routine in uh, the effort to prevent anal cancer, particularly for people who are too old or have had too much sexual exposure to benefit from primary prevention through vaccination. So to conclude, HPV is a really common virus. It contributes to the development of cancer in a small proportion of people, primarily through genetic instability. And um, if you add up all the cancers, anal cancer, cervical cancer, vulvar cancer, head and neck cancer, HPV-associated cancers cause a lot of global morbidity and mortality. So we must do something about them. And that is particularly the case that is a moral imperative since unlike many other cancers, these cancers are potentially preventable. Another piece of hope, which I'm not gonna to cover today because I know that's gonna be a topic for additional discussions at this conference, are better treatment for anal cancer itself for people who have developed it. And these include checkpoint inhibitors, therapeutic vaccines against HPV, not preventive, but therapeutic, and better radiation regimens to uh, try and affect a cure with much less uh, morbidity. So uh, Dr. Tedros, the Director General of the World Health Organization, was quoted as saying through cost-effective evidence-based interventions, including HPV vaccination girls, screening and treatment of precancerous lesions, improving access to diagnosis and treatment of invasive cancer, we can eliminate cervical cancer as a public health problem and make it a disease of the past. That would save millions of lives. Uh, in my own modest way, I would like to modify that statement and close with my quote, which is, through HPV vaccination and development and implementation, the screening programs for other HPV-related cancers, including anal cancer, we can make mortality from all HPV-related cancers a thing of the past. So with that, I'd like to thank you very much for your attention. Hope everybody enjoys this very important conference.